Good evening and welcome to CAN. Here's tonight's top story. At an anti-Bush rally and protest on September 14th in front of the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco, United Farm Workers Vice President and Grandmother Dolores Huerta was speared in the back with a riot baton by a member of San Francisco Police Department's tactical squad. She was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery to repair broken ribs and to remove a shattered spleen. She almost died. Patrick Henry has more on this story. Local television coverage of the tax squad's actions at the nonviolent demonstration clearly show a police department out of control. The following day, the mayor ordered the OCC, the Office of Citizens Complaints, and the police department to investigate the incident. The OCC, created by San Francisco voters during the Feinstein era in response to continued police misconduct, is an independent civilian staff police watchdog agency. It has the duty by law to investigate all allegations of police misconduct and issue its findings to the police commission for disciplinary action. The OCC conducted a thorough investigation of the Huerta incident and sustained a complaint that the officer did indeed use excessive force. This chart shows the structure of city government as it pertains to the police department. The police commission, appointed by the mayor, has only five members to represent all of San Francisco's citizens, which explains the gay community's uproar when he removed the only gay commissioner several months ago. The police commission is the ultimate police authority in the city. It hires the chief of police and oversees the department. It also hires and oversees members of the OCC. Both the OCC and police chief report to the police commission. So when the OCC reported its finding against the officer in the Huerta case, community groups thought the commission would hold disciplinary hearings. But that has not yet happened. In a surprise move, District Attorney Arlo Smith convened a criminal grand jury. Under his guidance, they found no misconduct on the part of the police, but instead recommended the police set up intelligence gathering on political groups that protest in the city. Some say his action not only undermines the OCC, but puts a chilling effect on free speech. On December 14th, without any notice to the press or public, Police Chief Frank Jordan appeared before the police commission and proclaimed he would take no action against any officer at the Bush demonstration, but would instead institute a 12-point crowd control policy. Although Mayor Agnos never appeared before the police commission in the past, he was there in person to support his chief and his no-discipline position. But the biggest surprise of all was safe for last, as City Attorney Louise Rene sent her deputy to the commission to announce that her office was looking at the city charter to see if the police chief's decision is final and cannot be overruled by the commission. The Police Officers Association, a strong supporter of the mayor in his election bid, stands solidly with the anti-OCC coalition. All this political maneuvering has left the OCC and the public twisting in the wind. 34 community organizations have signed a statement of outrage at the deplorable way the police and mayor have handled this case and undermined the OCC. They have urged the police commission to hold disciplinary hearings. At a police commission meeting a week after the chief's appearance, a defiant citizenry made its views known. CAN was there. In the three months that have elapsed since the St. Francis demonstration, however, Officer Asian has been the subject of an unrelenting personal and professional attack by certain elements of the electronic and print media and by the ACLU who have tried and convicted him over the airwaves. Officer Asian has remained mute during these groundless attacks while the investigative process was ongoing. He was also placed on an administrative duty status. When Officer Asian returned to full duty status at the tactical division, cleared of these baseless charges, he is due an apology for the personal tribulations he has been subjected to, particularly from KRON TV. Truth and evidence shows 
Mr. Crew will not rest until Officer Frank Asian has been prejudged, pre-tried, convicted, and terminated, merely to, to satisfy his desire to single out and destroy a working police officer who was merely doing his duty. Uh, I do feel obligated, however, to respond to the very unfortunate, frankly, I think, sad statements from uh, Officer Barry, and if he represents the Police Officers Association, uh, the perspective of the Police Officers Association. Let me start by saying what the ACLU has done in this case, and what members of the community are doing, is asking for accountability. And the claim that somehow the Office of Citizen Complaints the process that was created by the voters to investigate police misconduct, even submitting to that process as violating officers' due process rights, reflects a hostility that the PLA has shown to civilian review and indeed to public accountability for years. So I'm not terribly surprised from Mr. Berry's comments, but it's still unfortunate. And my name is Bill Paul, I'm president of the Stonewall Democratic Club. I'll try to be brief. We strongly support what John Crew has said on behalf of the ACLU, the National Lawyers Guild, and cool We'd like to emphasize our membership is gravely concerned with the actions at this commission meeting last week. We feel that somehow the process established by the voters of San Francisco in establishing OCC has been negated in favor of a decision by the chief of police. But furthermore, that this process was developed over years years and years to handle police misconduct cases in a way that was fair to officers and also ensured the tradition of civilian control. We don't believe that that can be obviated by an action of the kind taken last week. All other uh, police misconduct cases, we also wish to see that the Office of Civilian um, pardon me, the OCC remains an independent civilian investigative agency. And we want to see that it remain free of political interference and police control. We urge you to take that action. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is uh, Antonio Gonzalez with the International Indian Treaty Council. As a Vietnam veteran and in the treatment during the Vietnam War, I participated in brutality, in torture, in killing, and burning. And I realized my mistakes and my errors, my role in that activity. And I see a similar situation here, where those same forces are out of control. And I see a commanding officer who has no control of his troops. Indeed, he is being overrun himself. So we want to know in this community, who's in charge? Who is in control here? Who can we talk to about the injustices that have been occurring in our streets? Intensifying more so in the last year and a half. Good evening, Commissioner. My name is Kim Malcheski. I represent Monique Doyland. Miss Doyland was the woman who was standing next to Dolores Huerta when Huerta was brutally beaten at the anti-Bush administration. Since Ms. Doyland is not a prominent citizen, she seems to have been kind of lost in the shuffle. But the fact is the Channel 4 tape clearly shows Officer Number 1448 violently striking Ms. Doyland with his three foot long baton. You can see the, see the officer wind up in an underhand motion and swing his baton at her midsection several times. And then you can see the officer bringing his club over his shoulder and swinging at her in a downward motion and strike her in the left, left part of her, of her chest. Each time he hits her, you can see a painful expression on her face and you can read her lips saying, stop it, stop it. It is obvious from the tape that there is nowhere for her to go because there is a solid wall of people behind her. From that, I can only conclude that the only reason the officer was hitting her so strongly with this club was to punish her for being an outspoken woman at the demonstration. My name is Catherine Shusick. Um, I got trained at physician assistant. I worked for a year in the trauma center at San Francisco General. I was standing less than 10 feet from her, and as I say, I'm trained in medicine, especially trauma medicine. I don't know if you understand what it takes to break a sling, especially from the back. 
the lowest wertha, I'm going to start with the microphone for a minute, the lowest wertha comes to about here on me. Your spleen is here, under your ribs. It's a little easier to break it from the front. You can come up under the ribs, maybe, or you can hit the ribs directly. It's tough to do. You can do it. To break the spleen from the back, you have to break these ribs. And you have to go through some of the strongest musculature in the entire body. It's very hard to do. Maybe if you stood on top of Dolores Huerta and jumped up and down and weighed over 125 pounds, you could do it. And maybe not. It's very difficult to do what that officer did. I can't even imagine applying that much force to a human being. I think you've heard testimony, the grand jury did, you could break a door down with the force that man used on Dolores Huerta. I'm Howard Wallace, representing the United Farm Workers of America, and was in front of St. Francis Hotel the night of September 14th. I asked the police officer if I could go up towards Post Street. We just wanted to get out of there. He said, no, in there, in there, pointing to an area in which police officers had already begun plunging and jabbing with their batons. And there's that lovely euphemism, baton. It's a three-foot long club. A three-foot long club. And you could mangle easily a police officer with those clubs, not to speak of a 58-year-old woman less than 110 pounds. The attack that evening upon me, upon Dolores, was completely unprovoked. It was savage and it was sadistic. We aren't trying to smear the police in general. We're saying there's some corrupt practices, there's some corrupt behavior on that police force that is a danger to any citizen. If they'll do it to Dolores Huerta, they'll do it to anyone. Good evening. My name is uh, TJ Anthony. I did not plan to speak tonight, but after listening to some of the comments that were made earlier, particularly by Mr. Gary, I felt uh, compelled to make some observations. You know, my family has a long history and tradition of public service. I come from a family with over five generations who might have been policemen or firemen, consistently and solidly. And I must tell you that what I witnessed that day outside of the hotel was not in the tradition of what my family has represented for all those very many years. What I saw that day was out and out brutality. And I'd like to recount that. Looking unsuccessfully for entertainment on broadcast television? On cable channels. Give up yet? Superstar Video, the Castro Movie Store, offers you a spectacular selection of thousands and thousands of movies for as low as $2 overnight for any title you choose, including our extensive collection of adult videos. Two full floors of films are displayed alphabetically in distinctive categories. Our exclusive ticket system informs you that the movies are in stock and available. Renting out tapes is speedy with our friendly and computerized service. A barcode or ID is all members need to present when renting at Superstar because payment is made upon returning and membership is free. Our inventory increases daily, as does our commitment to quality and to the community. Superstar Video, the Castro Movie Store, opens seven days a week.